Sioux Falls, I'd like to welcome you to another listening and learning session. Uh, uh, this month, we're at Dow Rummel, and uh, I, have, I do not think that I've ever uh, had a listening and learning session at, at Dow Rummel, but when you see the crowd that we have here today, uh, I think there's some good incentive for me to, to come back uh, and engage these, these great people of, of Sioux Falls. Uh, um, again, it's, uh, it, it is July. Uh, I just came from outside. It's 102 degrees right now, but it's really comfortable here at, at Dal Rummel. And so really, really excited about this. And again, folks, a listening and learning session. There are no rules. You can ask me anything that you want, uh, but it is your program. I'm, I'm your mayor, and I'm trying to learn from you, uh, trying to engage you. And so uh, uh, I really hope that, uh, that you'll, you'll have some good questions or some good comments for me. Uh, you know me by now. I've been your mayor for almost seven years. I can talk all day, uh, but I really don't want to do that. I, I'm here to engage you. So uh, why don't we kick it off with, does anybody willing to, to ask me the first question or make the first comment? Anybody? I'm well, then, uh, Bailey, where's Bailey at? <laughs> Bailey's already left me. Oh, okay. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Bailey, thank you. It's not live TV, so we're, we're okay. Uh, Bailey, thank you. As I understand it, you're a grandfather now. I am a grandfather now, yes. So I just wanted to mention that all the rest of us look pretty good, but when you become a grandfather, all of a sudden you have a beard. Okay, okay. Well, uh, I, am, uh, I am a grandfather now, and this is the easiest question I may have ever had at a listening and learning session. Uh, but I am a grandpa now, uh, two months into this grandfather gig, and I am loving it. I, I mean, I had a really good life uh, before, uh, but now that I'm a grandpa, uh, it really just elevates everything to a, to a high level. And, and uh, you know, Sioux Falls, I, I will also tell you something, and, and uh, uh, there are times over the last two months where I've actually left my office uh, to go babysit uh, baby George. Uh, and give Kylie a break uh, and, and, and I'm really enjoying it. The only thing is is that my shirt gets all wrinkled and so the team they said they have to bring some shirts into the office now so those times when I do babysit but I'm enjoying it so yes thank you thank you I'm, I'm, I'm still growing as, as a, but anything else um, any come on this is gonna be the shortest listening and learning session we've ever had folks unless you ask me something or, or make a yes please of the city council who are objecting to the new administration building yes. and are trying to stop that and uh, you may or may not decide to veto this. Uh, what would your response or answer be to the objections that they are raising about that building? Very good, very good. This has been a, uh, uh, and the, the comment was there are some city councilors who are uh, um, uh, maybe objecting to the bonding of the proposed city uh, administration building. And the comments were, so, so what are your thoughts about that? Um, my thoughts were as follows. We've been talking about this as a city for a long, long time. Uh, in fact, uh, this probably started back in 2007. Um, as, as, as your mayor, we've been talking about it since about, oh, about the last two to three years. Uh, two of the years, have been truly just in, in collaboration with the, uh, with the city council. Um, one thing that you'll learn, whether it's uh, an event center, whether it's a pool, whether it's road construction, uh, whether it's pension reform, or whether it's building a new building, um, one of the things that you're gonna learn is that we've all got differing opinions on, on its merits, uh, on its timing, on location, on whatever it would be. Uh, in this particular case, we've brought forth uh, a recommendation that we think is, is very, very strong. Uh, and we knew that there would be you know, a bunch of debate, a bunch of dialogue, uh, more due diligence on it. And obviously, in this particular case, there is. Uh, we had a prior city council who voted to move this forward. And we've got a, we've got a, a city council now that wants us to, you know, may have a different opinion. Um, right now, I'm not going to tell you what, uh, what I'm uh, planning to do because uh, I'm still working through that. Uh, but, you know, one of the things that we, we have been working on this for two years, 
So I think it probably gives you some indication that at a minimum, I, I think that the, the debate and the dialogue and the due diligence has certainly been, been worth it. Um, we've got a situation where our city is growing about 4,000 people a year, okay? So we're growing a new Yankton uh, about every four years. I mean, imagine that. I've got some Yankton people here. We're growing a new Yankton every four years. And so you know what that means is that in order for us to keep up with that growth, uh, we're also going to have to grow some things, some basic infrastructure as a city. And infrastructure is not just roads, and it's not just sewer lines, and it's not just, you know, police and fire. Uh, infrastructure also is, you know, you need to have a place where citizens get served. Uh, you need a place for your employees to work. Uh, you need to do that. And uh, the way that we're doing it today is not very efficient at all. Uh, we've got, you know, serving the citizens, we've got places all over town where people have to go to to, to get served. Um, we've got employees that are uh, working in probably not the most favorable conditions. Uh, we're renting property uh, versus owning. And if you're only going to rent a short period of time, that makes sense. But as a city, if we're going to rent for a long period of time, that's a waste of your taxpayer dollars. It's a waste. Uh, so I think at some point in time, we have to decide, okay, is the city of Sioux Falls going to stick around? Uh, I, I think we are. Uh, we're not going anywhere. Uh, in fact, we're, we're getting stronger. Uh, we're getting more confident. We're getting more vibrant. It's a place where people want to be. And so because of that, there are certain investments that you, that you should make. And uh, so that's what we've tried to do. So again, I, there, will, I, there will be more dialogue. Uh, uh, at a minimum, I have to make a decision as your mayor uh, in terms of what, what um, uh, I am going to recommend. And I commit to you that I will make that decision here uh, uh, soon. And um, um, I'll do my best to try to explain why I believe the, the way that I believe on this particular topic. Um, uh, you should know I've not, uh, uh, I've not o uh, done a, a veto override since I've been your mayor. I've, I've not done that uh, to date. So, uh, you know, again, this is just another thing that, that I'll consider uh, as, as your mayor. And, and here's one thing that I can guarantee you, and I don't guarantee you things very often, but here's one guarantee. No matter what I decide, there's going to be a bunch of people mad at me. <laughs> That's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. And it's, it's <clears throat> you folks know I love this job. I do. But the, one of the more challenging things about this job is that every decision that I make, every single one, no matter what it is, there's at least four out of ten of you, sometimes five out of ten of you, that are mad at me every single time. Uh, and that's really hard. It's really hard. And, uh, but it's, it's what I'm supposed to, you know, I'm supposed to be your mayor. I'm supposed to lead. I'm supposed to, with the help of the council, with the support of the, the team, and with all of you, this is our city. So uh, here's my commitment to you, okay? And, and I wasn't expecting this to be the first one, but I probably should have. Um, here's my commitment to you. Whatever decision that I recommend, Sincerely, it's going to be like all the others. I'm going to do them based on what I think is best for this city, for this city, for these citizens. And that's the way it's going to be. That's the way it's going to be. Uh, and I've got all kinds of special interest groups who try to pull me this way, uh, special interest groups who pull me that way, and I'll listen to them, but I'm not going to be beholden to them. I'm not. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to make my decision based on what I think is good for this city. And uh, so more to come. Stay tuned. Okay, stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you. That was, uh, it, it is probably the hottest topic right now. And, and it should be. It should be. Folks, it's over a $20 million investment. So it should be. It should be a hot topic. There should be, you know, personalities saying no and the others saying yes. And, and there should be. It should be hard. It should be hard to spend $20 million of your money. It should be. 
Okay? So this dialogue, this debate, it's, it's okay. It's okay. So good job. Thank you. Good job. Others? Any topic? Yes, thank you. Where, where is... Here's a rule. Here's a rule. Get, folks, these people are out here. They need you. So you've got to be right here. So right here. There you go. Thank you. Well, uh, that's interesting. The, this city is growing at a very, very fast pace. Again, uh, uh, we've got right now uh, about what I'll call 50 islands, 50 islands. And let me explain that to you. The city has grown around pieces of property in our city. Okay, we've grown that fast. And there are these islands where we've not annexed them into the city. Uh, they're, they're living kind of within our confines, but they're not citizens or taxpayers of Sioux Falls city government, okay? So they're not suburbs, but they are, you know, parts of our town that, that uh, need to be annexed in. There, we've, got, we've got Harrisburg, we've got T, we've got Brandon, We've got crooks. We've got all these other areas where it, it's not going to be, it, in my lifetime, uh, God willing, in my lifetime, they will be truly suburbs of Sioux Falls. I mean, we're going to be connected. We will. We'll have, uh, uh, or we're suburbs of them, either way. Uh, but yeah, we will be connected. And that's what we're planning on. We've got a, we, we don't just plan five years out. We're planning 25 years out at a minimum. If you can imagine that. We've got a good idea where our next fire station is going to go, where our next school is going to go, where our next big mall is going to go. We, we plan that about 25 years out. Uh, and we work in collaboration with T and Harrisburg and Brandon, uh, all in the spirit of doing that. So, yeah, the, I think suburbs are, are uh, a true reality. Um, I mean, T and, T and Harrisburg are probably our, our closest of brothers or sisters right now. Yeah, good job. Thank you. Others? Anything? Yes, thank you. It may be controversial to some. I don't know about all the construction, but I think the streets in Sioux Falls are in such very good shape. I've been in a lot of cities where they're neglected and they are taken care of and they always look good. Can I ask you? Can I ask you where you've where you've lived or where you visited? All over South Dakota and <laughs> Minnesota. Aberdeen has a lot of problems because of the water level, and um, Mobridge and I don't know where else. Sioux Falls. Oh, that's where we are now. Thank you, thank you. If if I and first of all, thank you for that comment. I thank you for that comment. We we are spending a bunch of money, as you know, on roads uh, and bridges and water lines, sewer lines. Uh, I'm an infrastructure guy. Uh, and I think that, that that's what I think that's what government should really focus on is that infrastructure first. Your foundation should be really, really solid. Um, uh, and we've made a lot of progress on our roads. We have. We've come a long way in, in seven years. There's still work to be done. Um, one thing I will mention is that um, we just did a study uh, where we had uh, a firm come and they basically, they took a picture. If you can imagine this, folks, they took a picture of every single road in our town, every single road, and they analyzed it in terms of were there cracks in it, what was the, the drivability of it, what was the condition we took a picture and evaluated every single road and then we gave it a rating as well. And the reason we did that is that we wanted a more, a more objective way to s figure out where to spend your money, okay? Uh, and what we found is that now we know, bar none, we know the worst roads in our city. We know them. And uh, this study, they called them backlogged roads. Uh, it's those roads that are in pretty dire need of repair. And about 4% of our roads are backlogged, okay? Uh, the national average that they were, are usually around 10, we're at 4%. So we are in good shape in comparison to other cities. 
Uh, however, we, you know, if you live on one of those 4% backlog roads, what are you? You're mad at the mayor. You're mad at the mayor. You're going, come on, mayor. When's my road going to get done? And uh, so we are working right now on a plan to address not only those roads, but also all the other roads so we can stay on top of those too. Um, if, I, if I could you know, have some magic pixie dust, um, I would love to just sprinkle it over everybody and take them on a journey of American roads. I'd love it. I'd love to take you all on, on, on to towns all across America. Because like this person, in your name please? Ruth. Ruth. Like Ruth knows, uh, if you go around the country and you see the condition of roads that are out there, uh, we've got some really, really good roads here. We do, uh, in comparison to other cities. Uh, and, and, and Ruth, as you also probably know, folks, we get snow here. You know, we get snow here, we get ice here, we use salt here, uh, we beat on our roads because of the snow plows. Uh, we've only got five months, really, to repair our roads. So for our roads to be in this condition, uh, I do think it's a testament to our public works team. Uh, it's a testament to all of you because you want to have good roads. Um, you do. And so, Ruth, thank you. Thank you. I, I do think that they, I'm very happy with how far our roads have come. Uh, now, we, we've got some more work to do. And as well as, you don't want to just focus on the roads, okay? You also want to remember, remember the stuff underneath the roads too, okay? Those sewer lines, those water lines. And how many of you moved into, moved into Sioux Falls? Would you raise your hand? So about half, about half of you. <laughs> For those of you who moved in to Sioux Falls, I... I I'm also worried about your, your, these, these other towns and cities in, in South Dakota, too. And, and the reason being is that many times we, we focus on, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll repair the road, um, we'll fix the pothole or the sidewalk, and because it's pretty easy to kind of forget about the stuff below the roads, uh, it's easy, uh, especially for public servants, mayors, city councilors, county committee, it's kind of easier for them to do that. Uh, it really worries me. Because those water lines, those sewer lines, uh, many of them were built with things like concrete. Uh, and they were, it was done not 20 years ago, hundreds of years ago. Uh, they are deteriorating. And if you don't get in there and fix those soon, or repair them soon, or replace them soon, you're going to have some really bad stuff happen. And then what happens? You know, what happens? We, when I was first elected mayor, uh, I don't know how many of you have been here for my entire uh, seven years. This is no kidding. When I was first elected mayor, I'd been on the job maybe three months. And uh, I get this call. Uh, and Vicki said, Mayor, you got to come down to S City Hall right away. And I rushed down there, and Mark Cotter, who's the head of Public Works, he grabbed me and he said, Mayor Mike, he goes, you're not going to believe this, but we've had a major sanitary sewer line up by the prison collapsed on itself. Uh, do you folks remember that? It collapsed on itself. And uh, so we had all this raw sewage that was backing up through the system. And Mark said, Mayor, we, we've got a really good chance that 25,000 homes are going to have raw sewage in their basement here uh, in, in, uh, you know, over the next, the next couple of hours or, or days. And uh, we ended up doing some things that, 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 um, uh, that to, 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 to help that, that effort. But the, but the moral of the story was this. I think it was a real wake-up call for Sioux Falls. Uh, that, that you really have to pay attention to your infrastructure. You really do. And if you don't, you have no one else to blame but you. You know, it is expensive. Yep, it is. But if you don't do it, can you imagine? That would have been the worst health uh, catastrophe in Sioux Falls history. Maybe South Dakota. It would have been 25,000 homes with sewage in their basement. Can you imagine that? Um, so 
these small towns, these big cities in South Dakota, we also have to focus on the infrastructure below the ground too. So, so good job. But thank you for the comment on the roads. I appreciate it. Not everybody in the room agrees with you. They don't. They don't. But I do think they do. I think they know this. They know that we're aggressively attacking it. I mean, there's orange barrels everywhere, aren't there? They're everywhere. And I love it. I love it. So uh, thank you. Ruth, thank you. Thank you. Others? Other questions? Anything? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll go to the gentleman there first. And can I ask you, could you just tell me your first name and then? Bob. Yes, Bob. I have a quick question and then I'd like to make a comment if sure, I could. Uh, I wonder, uh, are you concerned at all with the liability of placement on the recent weeks, uh, and is, is some precautions made for their safety? Yes, and Bob, do you want me to answer that first, and then you'll make a comment? Or do you want to make the comment now? You, you go ahead, well, The comment was just that, the, that if you talk to people that have been along around this town for 50 years or more, what they say is it's too big, and I, I like it like it used to be. And uh, I think we've got a progressive community. We, we've got a, it's a, some growth, but it isn't growing too fast. Good job. Uh, I know Bob, and I appreciate him. And he's a guy who has uh, uh, been involved in not only Sioux Falls, but South Dakota for a long time. And he follows the city, uh, you know, like the back of his hand. And I think your comp first of all, let me let me talk about the your question, and then I'm gonna I'll, I'll I'll talk about your comment after that. Bob said, "Hey, Mayor Mike, you know what? What about the police uh, team, the fire team, the first responders? You know, are you concerned about them? Are you doing some things to protect them?" And Bob, let me first of all thank you. It, it what's going on in America is it's frightening beyond belief. Um, but it is, it is real. It is real. In Sioux Falls, we don't put our heads in the sand on this stuff. This stuff could happen here too. It could. Uh, you, you know, as you know, it, it can take one person who can do some really bad things uh, in, your, in your community, including Sioux Falls. Here's, here's our commitment to the, to the police team, to the fire team, to the first responders. We invest heavily uh, in them. We do. Uh, we try to hire as many people as we can to keep up with the, with the growth. Um, in my budget that I'm going to present here on next Tuesday, you'll see we're going to hire more police officers like we always have. And, and it wasn't just me. Mayor Munson did it. Mayor Noby did it. Mayor Hansen did it. We invest in police here in Sioux Falls. We do. Uh, we also we give them the best training, the best equipment. Uh, the best resources that we possibly can. We do. Um, all in the spirit of, again, not only protecting them, but also we want to protect you too. Uh, and so, so we do that. Bob, here's the hardest part though. No matter what we do, no matter how much we invest, uh, there's still the real potential that someone can do something really, really bad. And uh, that's just kind of the, the way that it's worked in your lifetime and, and in mine, is that you know, we take the day that God gives us, I think we go into it positively, we try to find the good in people, uh, we try to protect and serve everybody, uh, but if someone does something really bad, uh, we try to care for the people that they hurt, and we try to catch the people that did the bad stuff. And uh, they're out there. And I'll, and I'll talk about that, too, because I think that kind of leads now to Bob's next com comment, and that was, you know, hey, Mayor Mike, I, I, I don't mind progress. I don't mind growth, but what, are we growing too fast? Are we growing too fast? I, I don't think that we're growing too fast, um, but there are some things going on around the city, around the state, around the country that are, that are very, very concerning, okay? And let's talk about it. Uh, and this is going to be hard, but let's, let's talk about it. Um, if you look at the, the, the crime that is occurring in our city, in our state, and in our country, crime, okay? Uh, these bad people doing bad things for the most part. 
uh, there's really there's three three reasons that it's occurring and that it, and it is rising okay it, it is it, it's really three reasons the biggest reason right now for the increase is uh, what do you think it would be drugs, drugs. it's drugs and it's and it, and it's and it's interesting it's it's uh, it's meth okay meth uh, but now it's interesting it's not just meth it's what they call opioids. And a lot of the stuff is prescription medicine that they get and they get addicted to it or they sell it to others who get addicted to it. And it's called an opioid. And what's so crazy is that now there's an even cheaper way to kind of get that high. And this will really scare you. It's heroin. Can you, can you imagine that? And so you throw all that into the mix, you got, you got drugs, okay? Drugs, and they've been around, as long as you've been around, folks, drugs, they have. And we've been trying to stop them forever, and we're not doing a very good job doing it, are we? No, we're not. Drugs, the other one is, you can imagine what that is, when people do one, one thing, and they do it too much, they do some stupid stuff, what is that? Alcohol, thank you, alcohol, it is, alcohol. Uh, you know, we, when you drink too much uh, or when you, you, know, you go to the extremes, you really can do some really dumb stuff. Alcohol is another thing that is causing a lot of the, dr uh, the drugs, the, the, the issues. Especially, especially um, uh, can I have your help, please? Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, alcohol. Alcohol is another one uh, that, that is really impacting. And then there's a third, and it's one that's really hard to talk about, but I think that we have to talk about it, uh, is mental illness. Mental illness. Many of the people that are in our jails, they have mental illness challenges. They do. They do. And, and it's really, uh, uh, it, it's, a, it's a sad deal, but it's real. And so Bob you know, a lot, of the, the, a lot of the things that people are concerned about when it comes to growth involve crime, uh, and I get it, and I respect it, uh, uh, but those are some of those things that we're trying to work with as a, as a society, but I'll be honest, I don't know if we're doing a very good job. And do you have a follow-up comment, Bob? Please, do you have a follow-up comment? Uh, yeah, I just my main concern was uh, the, the, the thing that differed is that policemen being targeted. And I just I was wondering if they start if there was still one man to a, to a police car, uh, or, if, or if you're taking any special pre precautions in view of what's new. The, the new thing the last couple of weeks is policemen being targeted by yes. that goofball. Yes. Uh, Bob, it depends on the situation. Uh, we prefer two officers working. But there are, uh, in, there are cases where we'll have one. Uh, w there are. Depending on the situation, depending on the, uh, uh, the crime, depending on the environment, uh, depending on the time of day, depending on the day, there's a variety of things that, that, that uh, our police team does. But, uh, Bob, if I can get, our police team, led by Chief Burns, uh, Assistant Chief Smith, they, are, they know what they're doing. Uh, and they're also working collaboratively with the state as well as with the federal government. Uh, you can't imagine what's going on behind the scenes to try to you know, uh, work in concert to address some of these challenges that, that are out there, some of these bad things. Bob? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. Uh, just uh, on, the, uh, on the, uh, the size of the city, my preference would be to get steady but gradual growth at the interfection the, the roads and bridges keep up with the, with the growth. Don't grow too fast. So that's just a kind of, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good job, Bob. Thank you. There's one thing that is kind of out of our control, and, um, well, maybe it's not. For, for generations in South Dakota, for generations in Sioux Falls, you know, we've been talking about creating an environment where you know our, our young people would want to would want to stay at uh, or maybe even 
come back to. Um, and we've done it. We've done it. Uh, Sioux Falls is a place where people want to move to. Not only young people, but maybe more importantly, the active generation, retirees. They want to come to Sioux Falls. And you know, so we've created this place where it's, it's an attractive place to live. It's a great place to work. It's a great place to play. And so you know, we've got a, a quality of life that is just really good right now. And people know about that. And they want to, that's where they want to raise their kids. That's where they want to have a job. That's where they want to retire. And, and so you know, how do you tell people, well, you're not welcome. I'm already here. You know, you can't do that. Bob, the word is spreading. Sioux Falls is doing really good. And, and folks, from a, in terms of a place to retire for the active generation, it, is, it is, was named one of the top five in America. You know, and I can't tell anybody else, well, you can't come retire here. I mean, I can't tell people that. That's not right. If people want to retire in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, come on, come on down. We'd love to have you. If people want to work in Sioux Falls, come on down. We'd love to have you. And to me, if people want to raise their families here, they should come. With a caveat. They should be a good neighbor at a minimum. They should. I mean, they should. You can't, but not everybody's a good neighbor, Bob. Yeah, good job. Thank you, Bob. And it's great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, others, thank you. These are, I love these. I and, get pamphlets, individual pamphlets. Would you just tell me your first name, please? Arlette. Arle Arlette. Are you going to get cameras for each policeman? Good job. That's a great question. Right now, we are testing body cameras. Okay. Uh, all of our patrol cars, they have cameras. Okay. They, they shoot out. Okay. Um, uh, we are right, right now testing body cameras for people that are on uh, bike patrols or that are on motorcycle patrols, okay? So that, you know, they're not on the motorcycle themselves, they're on the, the person. And so we're testing that. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at right now, is we're in this testing phase in terms of body cameras. Um, the interesting thing is that, is that uh, they are quite expensive, okay? Uh, that's not the reason why you wouldn't do it, or would, but you should know, they're very, very expensive. And it's not so much the camera itself, it's all of the data behind the scenes that you have to keep all that memory of all those, of all that film. Uh, and it's very, very expensive. Uh, the reality is most bigger cities across America now, they're going to body cameras. They are. Uh, in Sioux Falls, we're not there yet. Yes. Would you repeat that, please? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, because the bad people, you know, are complaining the policemen are hurting them. And that's why I thought those body cameras on the policemen would be better for and yes. to see for sure who hurts who. Yes. And, and you know, it, it, uh, uh, these instances, they're rare uh, when, when, you know, those body cameras really play a, a critical role. But... Uh, uh, when they do happen, you know, they, they have shown some things that have really shed some light uh, that are out there. And I, I think what you have to try to figure out is, is it, uh, you know, uh, is it worth the investment? And right now we're still trying to figure that out. Well, the last few bad things that yes. have been happening, uh, body cameras, and wow. Yes. <laughs> Very good job. Thank you. Thank you, Arliss. Thank you. Others? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Are there plans to widen Madison Street? coming in from the interstate to our complex of event centers. Very good. Yes. There it becomes very congested. Yes. Very good. And, and thank you. Thanks for paying attention to this area. Um, uh, um, and, and if I could, if I had, if I had enough money to, to do it all in, in one year, certainly as, you know, as we were building the event center, I would have uh, taken care of all the infrastructure around it. But it, because it's so expensive, you do have to do it in pieces. Uh, you do. And as you know, we took care of Russell, and then we're working on West and Western and all this. And so, yes, Madison, you'll see, will be another piece of that, of that puzzle. 
uh, to, to stay one step ahead of all the activities that, that are happening here. Um, the good news is that with all of the, the big shows that we've had, you know, Elton John, uh, uh, Paul McCartney, the Eagles, whatever it would be, the good news is that people are getting in in a, in a really a timely fashion. And maybe more, what's even more exciting, they're getting home in a very, very timely fashion. However, we still do realize we've got to invest in, in things like Madison Avenue uh, as well. Uh, we've got to make them smoother, safer, wider, faster. Uh, we have to do those things. Um, uh, but again, we're going to go back to that, to that prioritization. We're trying to prioritize these very, very valuable taxpayer dollars as best we can. And we want to do it all. Um, you know, I've got some folks that don't have near as much traffic, of course, as Madison. But their road is in really, really bad shape. And they're going, come on, Mayor. You know, I pay my taxes, too. I'm just as important as someone who's going to see uh, some rock show at, at the event center. And so that's where that balance comes into play. And that's where this study that we did will help us determine what's the right thing to do. Uh, but yes, Madison is one of those that we're paying attention to as well. Um, you know, it's interesting. We don't have a lot of east-west. Our east-west roads, they're really critical for us. Uh, they, the east-west, you know, uh, trying to keep people going east and west, that's hard. You know, we've got, that, we've got those two golf courses side by side right in the heart of our town. That really impacts our city. It does. And that was a decision that was made by a mayor a long, long time ago, uh, or council or, or whatever. And uh, those golf courses, they're not going away, and nor should they. But it does, it does impact our city. Uh, and that's why that Madison Road is so critical. Yeah, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you. One thing about Madison that I think would be nice to do, even before you get to the widening part and all of that, is to post it in some ways to make both pedestrians and drivers aware of the fact that when there are ball games there on summer evenings and people are parked solid on both yes. sides and other people are trying to get up and down the road, um, I think just even some signs to alert people on both sides of the fence that it's kind of a safety issue there, I think. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. And that wasn't a question. That was a comment. And now I can learn from that. I will tell you what. Um, uh, SMG, the folks that are managing our event center, managing our arena, our convention center, our ballpark, uh, I will mention that to them because that is, it's, it's good advice. I mean, whenever there's a big event, we should have more signage that say, slow down, or you know, please pay attention to pedestrians, especially right where you're talking about, because we've got little kids playing ball, we've got uh, adults playing softball, uh, we've got parks there, and so they're doing what they normally do, but then all of a sudden we got people who are trying to get to an Elton John concert that same night. Yes, it was a good job. Thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Uh, others, great job. Keep them coming. Proud of you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I got a, a bit of good news. We got the best downtown in, in the country. <laughs> you know, most cities, as they grow, downtown goes to pot, but not in Sioux Falls. Well, uh, thank you. And uh, I, I, Sioux Falls, I swear, I didn't set this up. I didn't set this up. I didn't bring these people in. Thank you. I, I, our downtown, and, and I mean, when I was running for mayor, um, uh, our downtown was a lot different seven years from now, seven years ago. It was, it was not, we were, you remember, that was a, uh, the, the economy was not very good. Our downtown was really struggling. Uh, I went to every floor of every building in our downtown. And I'm telling you, there were floors where I could have lived there and no one would have found me in downtown. That's not, that's not a joke. That's real. That's real. We, had, we, had, we had businesses that were barely hanging on. Um, in our downtown right now, thank you, sir, our downtown, I believe... I'll compare, I'll compare against any in America. It is really hopping right now. And the thing that I'm most excited about is not only is it the place to work, okay, eight to five, Monday through Friday, it's a great place to work. It's a great place to play. It is, it's a great place to play. You go downtown on the weekends, oh my gosh, it's hopping. Nights, it's doing very, very good. 
It's a great place to play. You know what I'm excited about, Sioux Falls? Dow Rummel? What am I excited about? Thank you. In your name? Gene. Gene. Gene says it's a great place to live. That was my, that's what he may, he may have followed. Thank you. You're learning. Good job. Um, uh, I, it's I, a great place to live. It is. That was my dream. That was my vision. That was my goal. Because I've lived like you. I've lived all over the country. I've traveled all over the world. If you want a vibrant downtown, if you really want it to be vibrant, you want to make it the place to live. Because then your blood is pumping 24 hours a day. It is. I got and a bit of history, though. For please, you. go ahead. We had a suburb once, East Sioux Falls. The, the streetcar used to run to East Sioux Falls. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Uh, and, you know, that we, could talk, boy, we could talk about that topic, too. Uh, but, but our downtown is really doing well right now. And what's exciting is that there's all these, uh, all the old buildings downtown, they're being refurbished and they're being turned into places to work or better yet, they're turning into lofts where people are living. And it's not just young people, it's people of all ages. A lot of retirees are, are they want to live in downtown Sioux Falls. And uh, we're growing places to live downtown in ways that we've never thought of. So, Thank you. Thank you. And where, where have you lived in your, in your life? Can I ask? I where, spent most of my time in Slayton, Minnesota. Slayton, okay. Yeah. Okay. What's, what's the best part of downtown for you? Phillips Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> Phillips Avenue. It's a joy to see those people enjoying downtown. I, well, and your first name, sir? Marvin. Marvin. Marvin, what we're trying to do uh, Phillips Avenue, what Marvin's talking about, now what we're trying to do is we, we're trying to replicate that. And we're trying to replicate that now on Main. We're going one street over to the west, okay? And now we're trying to recreate a Phillips on Main. Uh, with, it's called the Main Avenue Road Diet. And so we've got all these cutouts and we want to put, you know, get people eating there and playing there and working there and living there. So that's the, Marvin, we're not done. We're not done. Thank you. Thank you, Marvin. Appreciate it. Thank you. They don't have the old buildings, though. You know, that's interesting. Uh, they're, they're not as old and they're not as tall. That's true. But the ones that are there, they are getting refurbished. Uh, and I think that you're going to find there's some interesting announcements coming uh, on some of the buildings there. And again, they may not be as high but they are, uh, they're, they're going to be unique. Now, there is one that is being built right now called Washington Square, right across from the Washington Pavilion. That one is going to be really tall. That's going to be modern, though. That's going to be modern. But I, I think it'll have some, <laughs> some features that'll give it some, some really uh, aesthetically pleasing uh, features that'll tie in nicely to that downtown. Uh, oh, my, okay. <laughs> And the carpenter, that has turned out to be just magnificent. Magnificent, so thank you. Thank you. And, and this is, you know, all those old, those buildings uh, downtown, you know what's so attractive for the people who want to live there, you know what they want? They want it to look old. They, they want it to look old. They want, they want the old brick, the old wood. They even want, you know, the pipes that are hanging from the ceilings, they want those, they want them exposed. Uh, the, the, the older, the, the, the more historic uh, that it is, the better that they like it. It is just great. Those high ceilings, uh, uh, you know, they want the dust out, but they, other than that, they, they want, and yes, they do want the access to the, to the shows, to the uh, uh, restaurants, to the um, uh, bars, to the activity. They do, so good job, thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, one thing I'm thinking as I listen to you hype all the great things about Sioux Falls, I moved here less than a year ago. Welcome. Thank you. And I had served two terms as an elected council person to a suburb of Sioux Falls, of Sioux Falls, St. Paul, same thing. Yes. Um, and one of the big issues people had there was communication between city and residents. And it's, 
you know, we had a community newsletter done with one staff person and a committee of residents that came out 10 times a year. And that was where a lot of the things that were happening kind of under the radar of the newspapers could get out to residents. And um, it just seems to me that a city the size and vigorous activity level of Sioux Falls could maybe use something like that to, to let people know what's happening and make them feel more invested. And um, I just think that you know, rather than relying on the Argus leader and Gannett to decide what will get in the paper when, that I would just like to see the city at least consider doing something like that to do a newsletter from the city to the residents and businesses. Thank you. And your name, please. Lois. Lois. Lois, we are aggressively doing that, and we do it daily. We do it daily. We've got that already. Uh, in, and folks, all of you, I would highly recommend, in fact, Bailey, when we're done, we need to get every one of these folks uh, our, our address for www.suefalls.org. Okay? That's where every, if you want to know anything about anything going on in our city, just go to suefalls.org. It's got everything. And it's very easy to utilize, very easy to navigate. Or, uh, it was it Lois? Lois. Lois. Uh, and I, I, I don't know if you've got a, a, a phone, an iPhone or anything like that, but you've got things like Twitter feeds. We're sending out feeds of all of these activities that are happening on the spot as they go. Now, in terms of sending out a, a, a handwritten, or I'm sorry, a paper, uh, 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 a paper that is printed every day and distributed to the, to the people, that's, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. It's just too expensive. No, no we but, were doing 10 times a year, which, you know, yes. it was not even quite monthly, but we could cover some of the things in more detail and focus. Yeah, and, and even that, though, Lois, you have to understand, we're, um, what's, what's so crazy, I'm a pa I like touching things. I actually really, I still read the paper, the, the real paper, okay? I need that. Magazines, I need the paper. But... Here's reality. It's going away, folks. It's going away. I mean, the, the days of paper, Lois, they're, 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 they're almost gone. So we've got, in order for us now, if you want to find out what's going on in the city of Sioux Falls, add Dow Rummel. We need, to, we need to work with the Dow Rummel folks. There's all kinds of uh, access that you can get. And, and maybe you should just even have one computer that's just got nothing but the city of Sioux Falls happenings on it. And just go there and start to, start, and, and it's got everything. I uh, how many of us are left out. We don't do computers. Well, and, and I respect that. I am one of the probably the least technically proficient mayors in the world. Uh, I, I'm not a very good technical guy either. Uh, I don't, I'm not, I'm not very savvy. Uh, but I too, I'm having to learn. I've got to, I've got to do it. You know, I don't do this Twitter thing. Uh, I don't do it. But, but what's happening is that now, more and more, that's how folks get their news. It's all based on some headline. You know, a headline comes, they look at the headline. If it's interesting, they'll, they'll, they'll hit it. They may read a paragraph. If it's still interesting, they may continue reading. But now everything is just boom, quick. Uh, headline here, headline there. No one reads this full stories anymore. Uh, so, yeah, it's a very interesting time, Lois. Um, it is. But... In terms of communication, we do things like CityLink, uh, that's 594, Channel 16. Uh, we try to engage the people as much as we can through the media, uh, through press releases, uh, press conferences. Uh, and we do things like listening and learning sessions, where we're trying to talk to the people about things that are bothering them, things that they're concerned with, things that they're happy about, whatever it would be. You did say a word, though, and I... I uh, uh, you said something, you said, Mayor, you know, I'm listening to you hype everything. Here's the deal, folks. It is, my style is, I just, I take the day and I go as hard as I can. My personality is probably a little more uh, out there. And uh, it is the way that God made me. My dad was, he wanted to, you know, engage everybody. He wanted to touch everybody. He wanted to know their story. My mom, as you know, my mom wants to love everybody, <laughs> wants to care for everybody, wants to save everybody. 
And so, Lois, I don't know why I am this way. I am what I am. I am your biggest cheerleader. I am. I, I am, uh, and I love this job. And even on a bad day, I'm having a great day. I just am. You know, I was in corporate America 25 years, and I learned a lot. I, I did. But as your mayor, on my worst days, I'm having a great time. I'm having a great time. You know, I am. Uh, I just am. I'm having a great There was, a, you know, that, that vote uh, helped me, and uh, the vote on the uh, city and admin building. You know, I know that people were thinking, oh, the mayor's going to be down, or he's going to be mad, or he's going to break something. Are you kidding? That next morning, I, I woke up. Uh, I didn't sleep as well, okay? Uh, but reality, I woke up. I read the paper. I went for a, a five-mile run. I'm training for a, a half marathon right now. Uh, I went for a five-mile run. I had some peach cobbler that was left over uh, from, from the, the, the day before. I ate the peach cobbler. I went into my office, and I had a great, I had a great day. And What's I was, your next job? Oh, I'm sorry? What's your next job? What are you running for now? Bob, that question is off the limits. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, Bob, thank you. That's very, uh, sincerely, and I'm not trying to be, I'm try, trying to play some game with you folks. I'm not, I truly am, I am focused on being your mayor right now. I've got, a, you've, I've got well over almost two years yet to serve you, okay? I'm focused on this job right now, you people, because guess what? There could be a sewer line collapse tomorrow or a fire or, or some other opportunity. That's what I should be focused on, and that's what I'm doing. I am. So, so thank you. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sometimes welcome to our town. Uh, welcome to our town, and thank you for being here, Lois. Appreciate it. Yes. But, Mayor. My friend. Yes, sir. You're a Democrat, and this is a Republican city and a Republican state. How in the world can you continue with this enthusiasm? <laughs> oh, more water, please. More water. <laughs> Oh my gosh, uh, I am coming back to Dal Rommel too, by the way, I'm coming back here. Uh, they're loosening up, aren't they? They're loosening up. I, uh, um, let me just say something. I have done everything that I can over the last seven years to keep partisan, and I got a bad word I was going to say, but I can't say it on TV. Uh, to keep that stuff out of what we're doing here in Sioux Falls. Uh, I am. This, it, it's not about being, you know, you don't fix a pothole because of some Democrat policy or some Republican policy or some independent policy. You don't do that. In city government, especially in Sioux Falls city government, you want to keep that partisan stuff out. And I think for the most part, we've done a, a, a pretty good job. Uh, now, I will say this. Um, it is creeping in. It's creeping in, and 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 I and I, and, and I it, it's it's Bob, it scares me. It scares me. It's creeping in, you know. You you see the stuff that's happening nationally, and how you can't get people working together, finding common ground, uh, even communicating, uh, and, and they're not getting anything done because they're so mad at each other. You know, they're 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 more on the extremes than they are working together. Um, uh, state, state government, you know, I, I think in South Dakota we do a, a better job than other states, but there's some issues even there. In Sioux Falls city government, at least for the most part, uh, that stuff has stayed out of the fray. Uh, but I've seen it. It's coming in. It's coming in. There's some things that are even going on right now that really concern me uh, because of partisanship. Uh, and I'm, and, but I'm, I'm just not going to deal with it. I'm going to just, again, I want to, the decisions that I make, uh, and your first name again was? Nancy. Nancy. Nancy, I mean it sincerely. And folks, whether you believe it or not, the decisions that I'm making as your mayor are based on what is, what I believe is right and good and sustaining for the city the city and the citizens, not some special interest group, not some political party, not some powerful person, not, it's, and, and, and when we do that as a community, when we do that together, and when your elected leaders do that, 
you stand a much better chance of having a really good government, a really good town, a really good city, a really good county, a really good state, and a really good country. Uh, but right now, uh, you know, um, uh, that's not happening everywhere. And sadly, it's creeping into Sioux Falls. Don't give him the mic. No, no. <laughs> Come on, you can have it. Yes, thank you. Thank you. My question concerns uh, on the change of government, and I forget the exact year that it took place. Yes. Our present charter. At that time, one of the reasons it came about was the fact that people felt all the power in Sioux Falls was south of 18th yes. Street. I wonder if that has changed. I also was a part of city government in the sense that I was the first chairman of the Board of Ethics yes. and spent 13 years put on there by two different mayors on, on the Board of Ethics. And uh, we saw some things on that board which are strictly confidential. And uh, there still was bitterness of the past in the sense of a political division. Yeah. And I think the reality is I'm, I'm an optimist, but there's also, I'm a realist too. No matter where you're at, there's going to be division and there's going to be politics and there's going to be games and there'll be some partisanship. Um, uh, but, but, you know, I, I think that, again, if you should minimize it as best you can, and I think your government will be more effective. Um, uh, I like our form of government. I do. Of course, I'm a, I like the strong mayor form of government, of course, because I'm, I'm a fairly strong mayor type. Um, but I also, the checks and balances of the council, I think, play a, a valuable role, uh, a very valuable role. And so I think as long as they work together, uh, and they do it for the right reasons in terms of making their decision or having their debate. I think, I think we've got a really good government. Where I've seen issues over the last seven years that I've been your mayor is when, when the, the, some of that other stuff creeps in is when we've had the potential for some bad government. Uh, and, and that makes that, that, that I don't like at all. Um, but it's been happening for thousands and thousands of years. It is, it, it, and, and, uh, but, but I, I, I like our form of government, I, really, I do, I do. Because um, I, I think that you can, you can find common ground, you can use common sense, uh, you can collaborate uh, to ultimately make something good happen for your city uh, between the executive branch and, I think you can, I think you can. I, I like what we've been able to do here, uh, it's good. It's not, not every day is easy. Uh, but, but in the end, I think it's worth it. it. It's a good thing. So thank you. And thanks for your service. Thank you. We didn't pay you much for that, did we? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Zero. That's right. Thank you. Welcome. Joanne. Jo Joanne. Thank you, uh, Joanne. Something that hasn't been mentioned, and I'm relatively new to this state, this part of the country. Okay, Joanne. From the West Coast to transplant, but I have a daughter here. Mm. But anyway, nothing has been mentioned about the wonderful family opportunities and that wonderful bike path. Who developed that? What a wonderful place for the whole family to go, whether it's mother and somebody in a stroller, whether it's husband and wife, whether it's the whole family. They can bicycle from one side of Sioux Falls down around, come and get in on some concerts down there by the river and bicycle back home without spending a penny. Joanne, thank you. It's beautiful. Thank There's you. There's not another city like it. Well, it's interesting. Uh, not a lot of cities have a bike trail that goes around the entire city in a loop. And ours does. It's about 21 miles. And then you throw in another five to six miles of, of connections to it. Uh, it does really make it special. Uh, and one of the great things is about a year ago, uh, Joanne, we celebrated for the first time where you didn't, it, 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 uh, it was all uh, nonstop. There were no places where you had to stop and you know, look for traffic. We made it so that now you, it's just a continuous loop. And we're trying to find a way, uh, Joanne, to get more connectivity to it, as well as now uh, we are beginning to take some of those bike trails and working our way out 
towards some of those potential suburbs too. We are, but thank you. It uh, uh, and it's it's right now it's it's in really really good shape. We've tried to make it faster, wider, smoother, safer, and uh, it's come along. But thank you, thank you. But you know, Joanne, I I'll say something. You know, not everybody uses the bike trail, so there are folks who are going, hey, wait a second, Mayor, why are we spending money on that bike trail? I don't use it. I don't use it. You know. Uh, I would rather have this or that. And that's the challenge when you're the mayor or you're the city councilor or a county commissioner or whatever it would be. You, you do have to make tough decisions and you have to prioritize the best you can. And again, remember, every time you do that, though, four out of five out of ten are mad at you. They are. But thank you for recognizing that. And, and you moved here from California. That's wonderful. No, to be with, no, no, no. no. Where did you move here from? Washington. Washington. Okay. Well, welcome, welcome. Well, I'm gonna ask you a tough question, okay? Well, I need that mic back. Because uh, you said something glowing about Sioux Falls, I'm gonna, and we're gonna make her do this right now on TV. Okay, so give me, but what's something that you're worried about or that you're concerned about being in Sioux Falls? You gotta come up with something. What, what's something that we can improve on? You're trying your very best, and that's crazy. I mean, everybody here has heard me say, when my husband and I moved here about almost 10 years ago, we moved here from Gig Harbor, Washington, which is right next door to Tacoma. And at the time, every night, he said, they kill as many people on the streets of Tacoma at night as they do in Iraq. And here in Sioux Falls, when we came, maybe there was one a month Maybe there was one murder that got to be almost a week, and now it's becoming a series, unfortunately. But you're doing your very best to keep it family-oriented and entertaining. But it's a big problem for mayors and governors. <clears throat> it is. When it comes to quality of life, uh, bar none, um, Joanne, the most important factor in that quality of life is whether you feel safe. Because everything else is, is secondary. It really is. I mean, we probably need water and air, you know, um, uh, some food. But the, the safety, do you feel safe, uh, is so critical. And so when Joanne talks about, or Bob talks about, uh, you know, Mayor, gosh, are we growing too fast? And, and it seems like there's more crime. It does really bother me. It does. Um, I, but I, my commitment to you and the council's commitment to you is that we're going to keep investing as... Uh, the time, the talent, the resources, the training, uh, the technology to, to stay ahead of it. You, we don't have a lot of murders in Sioux Falls or in South, we don't, we don't. Uh, we don't have a lot of shootings in Sioux Falls, uh, in South Dakota, we don't. But the reality is, is that more and more, uh, as stated by uh, Sheriff Milstead and Assistant, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Chief Burns, they just said it the other day, we don't have a lot of shootings, we don't have a lot of murders, we don't have a lot of things like that, but more and more, there is more of a propensity that if something bad is gonna, there was a gun there. There was a gun there. And what Sheriff Milstead and, and Chief Burns said is that more and more it's these drug deals that are going on. And it was interesting how they, how they said it. They said that, that um, they were trying to coach the people of Sioux Falls. They were saying, you know, what happens is that there's, um, somebody who wants to buy drugs and who has cash and then there's someone who says they want to sell drugs and so the two of them get together and it was interesting what Sheriff Milstead and, and Chief Burns said. They said that in some cases the guy who says he wants to uh, 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 sell drugs, 
He just wants the money and he pulls out a gun and says, give me your money. Or the other guy says, I want your drugs, give me your drugs. Or I'm gonna... That's what's happening more and more. And that's the scary part. Uh, and I don't know how to fix that. I, I don't. I mean, Sioux Falls, I don't know, I don't know how I'm going to fix that. We've been talking about this as a, as a nation for a long time. But, but it is happening. And, and so, you know, I made you answer that question because I really do care about it. You know, I can be your biggest cheerleader and I can, you know, talk about all glowing how, how well we're doing. But we still have challenges here. We do. We've got some roads that need to be fixed. We've got some crime that needs to be addressed. We are growing as a city. Um, uh, we have to pay for this stuff uh, that we all want. Um, uh, it's not perfect. So, yeah, thanks for coaching me. Uh, I, I think that reality is, I think that that's probably the one thing that I'll hear more and more. Not a lot, but still, it's, you know, Mayor, we're still a very, very safe community, but, God, just seems like those casinos are getting uh, busted into more. Or, you know, it seems like there's more... Um, um, uh, someone going into a place and saying, hey, give me, give me your, your money. But I think what Sheriff Milstead and, and Chief Burns will tell you, it goes back to that drugs. That drugs. Um, and, and what a sad deal. I mean, these people, drugs, alcohol, and the mental illness uh, challenges that we face as a, as a community. Good job. Yeah. Yeah, the, the comment the was, and the we didn't get it all. The kids that but, go and do yeah. stupid things like that, is, aren't, aren't they because of drugs? Well, I and mean, you know what is, it, in, and again, I, I think we sometimes we want to talk about just the kids using it. Uh, to, folks, the, the drug stuff, it's, it's all ages. I know. I'm it's all ages. talking about the shootings at the schools, you know, yeah. and that all over the country. Yeah. It, Don't you think they're all, even the blowing ups over in Europe, there can't be that many mean, mean people inside. Well, see, but I don't think that's there are that. I don't think there's that many that. mean, mean people. I don't think there are. That, 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 causes them to for, do for that. Most, for most, yeah, I mean, it's, it's very, very rare that a, that a person is going to go to that extreme to, that, they, that they do, where they do really, really bad stuff like murder someone or, or hold somebody up or, or you know, it's very rare, but they are there, and it does get your attention. And now, with the way that we do things through Twitter and Facebook and media, it, it, it's so, so we do feel it when it does happen, uh, and, and it's real. So, no, I thank you. Good job. You've been here 10 years. Just about 10 years. 10 years, thank you. Well, thanks for coming. Family city, and it is. It is. No matter what challenges we have, the reality is, it, I don't, and again, I'm your mayor, and I'm cheering you on, but you try to find a, a better city than Sioux Falls right now, it's really hard. Because financially, we're, we're in good shape, financially. Uh, our quality of life is, is very, very good. Uh, we still have challenges. You know, affordable housing is becoming a, a big challenge for people, affordable housing. And especially when you've got people moving into your town, because uh, even the, the cheaper properties or the older, they're getting purchased now, refurbished, and so where do, where do people who can't afford, where do they go? Affordable housing, really, really uh, a tough deal. Um, uh, I like how our wages are starting to go up here more. They are, uh, again, because you got a 2.1% unemployment rate. Wages are gonna go up, benefits are getting better. But it's still, it's a, it's a challenging, it's a challenging uh, time for, for, for some people. Yes, thank you. Good job. Keep it coming. Thank you. Others? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You've done a great job. Let's give her a round of applause today. She's... Oh, it's so funny. She's trying to stay off camera. No, I love that. I love that. Are you from uh, Sioux Falls, born and raised? Minnesota. Minnesota person. Okay, good. Well, your mom and dad may be watching this, so they'll, they'll see you. They'll see you. Thank, thank you. Yes. I'm wondering if you have a special uh, team that is focused on drug problems yeah. and trying to keep it out of the city. Thank you. And your first name, please? Carol. Carol. Carol, we do. Uh, Carol asked, do you have a special team that focuses just on, on drugs? Yes. It's interesting. 
We've got uh, uh, special teams focused on things like narcotics or drugs, um, gangs, um, uh, focused on these very specific types of crime or activity, not only when it occurs, but more importantly, we're trying to be in front of it. You know, we're trying to catch it before it occurs. Um, and, and so it's kind of a two-prong approach. Uh, we even break out now, we're, we've done something different um, over the last six years. Now we even break everything out into quadrants, okay? So we've got a police team that works on this part of town, police team that works on this part of town. And that was important because again, it went back to communication. We wanted to find a way to better communicate with the people of our town. Not only the good people, but we are communicating with the bad people too. You know, trying to stay one step ahead of, of them and knowing what they're doing. Uh, so yes, it's a, it, I'll tell you, crime control uh, is very specialized now. It is, uh, and again, remember, it's not just us working as a city. Uh, we're coordinating our activities with the county, with the state, and this is interesting, with the federal government. Uh, so things like terrorism. You may not believe this, but we are working hand in hand to try to stay one step ahead of terrorism in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We are. We are. It, it's real. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Uh, it, it is. And so, uh, yes, there are very, very specialized techniques, methods, uh, that we're using nowadays to, to really uh, stay a ahead of it. And, and again, um, I, I, it's, a, it's a safe place to live, but I don't want to minute there. We, we do have to, don't put our, we cannot put our heads in the sand. We can't uh, anywhere. Uh, whether you're from Tripp, South Dakota, Mitchell, South Dakota, or Sioux Falls, South Dakota, you got to pay attention to this stuff because it's, it's real. And, and these, remember how I started, I said, talked about drugs? Remember the first, the first drug that I told you about? Meth. Thank you. Ma'am, your name? Rosemary. Rosemary, Rosemary you're flat out. Meth. Those, those meth labs that are, that are, they're not just, they're just don't happen in just Sioux Falls. In fact, they happen in places like, I don't want to mention their small towns and big towns. They're everywhere. So this meth deal, this drug deal, this drinking deal, this mental illness deal, it's impacting every city in, in the country, uh, including Sioux Falls. Yes, thank you. I have a question. What about poverty in this city? Yes. We're hearing about all of the good things and the nice things, but there's a certain percent of people that can never attain that. Yep. Th in your name, please? Harriet. Harriet. Uh, Harriet, there are a lot of good things going into, into town. Uh, but one of the challenges that we face uh, is, yes, there's people that are struggling to make ends meet, uh, paying their bills, finding affordable housing, uh, finding enough food to eat. Uh, the, the biggie, of course, is health care. Health care. Uh, as a city, I, I'm proud of our city because we are a place where you can go to get a hand up, too. Uh, we've got so many organizations here in town working to help people that are in poverty or that are working poor. Got a lot of people with two jobs, okay? They got two jobs. The husband's working. The wife is working. They're both working, but they're, but they're, 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 in, they're close to a poverty situation. They're living poor, okay, or working poor. Uh, so we've got that. So there's a variety of organizations that are there to support uh, as well as the city of Sioux Falls, we're doing our part to try to help there too. Um, uh, whether it be community, our Falls Community Health, where we provide uh, dental, um, uh, mental, and physical care, uh, things like affordable housing programs, uh, and, and so much more. We're, we're working on that. Um, but again, the challenge is, is that no matter where you're at, there are folks that are doing very, very well and others that are struggling. I think a good community is one that tries to find good balance and support both. Uh, support both. Um, 
Okay, I'm going to talk about a topic and, oh, I shouldn't do this. <clears throat> you know my mom. And she taught me that we have to care for everybody. And then all of a sudden you become the mayor. And you're trying to find a way to balance all these needs and all these wants uh, that people have and all these challenges that we face and all these opportunities that we can capture. And you know my mom. You know how she taught me. I, I'm getting ready to do a budget address uh, next Tuesday, and you can watch it. There has been a topic that we've been talking about, or I've been trying to talk about for, for about seven years now, and it's, it's a hard one, but it involves things like uh, transportation or paratransit transportation. And, and here's the challenge is that there are people who don't, I've got, I've got three trucks that I own. So I, if I want to go somewhere, what do I do? I pick one of my three trucks. And I drive from here to there, and I can just pay for it. Fill the gas, get the oil change, and just go. There's people who can't afford their own car or their own transportation. And then you talk paratransit. That's an even greater challenge because those are folks who, who they can't get from point A to point B in a car or in a truck or maybe even using the bus. Okay? But here's the hardest part of my job. I gotta find a way to meet all these needs, including folks that are that have these challenges that God has has has, has uh, maybe given them, such as those who need paratransit. Okay, and some of you may even use paratransit right in this room. But here's the reality: I'm, the reality is, is, if we don't do something to address these challenges within our transportation system, including paratransit, there is a freight train coming. And it's going to just hit us really, really hard. Uh, uh, but the reality is it's so hard to deal with the topic because you know people need public transportation. You know they, they're struggling to get from point A to point B. But at the same time, it's, it's incredibly expensive. It, it is. And, and how, do you, how do you meet that, that need between one paratransit ride is about 30 bucks in terms of expense and what do we charge? About three. What do we do? What do we do? I mean, that, that, from a business sense standpoint, that doesn't make a lot of sense. But these people are struggling. You know, they, they want to go to the shopping or they want to go to their doctor's appointment, or they want to go get their drugs filled at, at, at the, the drugstore, or they want to go to church. But how do you make tough choices like that? But if we don't do something, there's a freight train coming, and it involves transportation in Sioux Falls. Uh, whether you're a public transportation or a public transport or a paratransit person, we have to deal with this as a community, folks. We have to deal with it. And it's going to be really hard, but we've got to do it. We've got to do it. The federal government, the money that they used to give us, they're not giving it to us. The state government, and I'm not blaming Governor Dugard, but there's no money coming from the state government to deal with public transportation or paratransportation in, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We have to figure this out as a community. And, and I'm, I'm just, I'm warning, I'm, I'm going to warn everybody on Tuesday. This is one topic I've tried to bring to the forefront that we've got to be more aggressive with, and it's not getting the attention that it deserves. Uh, and, it, and it's that battle between, you know, how do we serve the poor, but at the same time still be prudent and responsible with the taxpayer dollars that we've got. Uh, and, and so it's really hard. It's really hard, but I still love the job. But, but at the same time, you know, my mom and my dad taught me there's certain basic things, though, that you have to do, and that's care for everybody. 
uh, regardless of their age, regardless of their income, regardless of their color, regardless of what church they go to, the, you know, re regardless of that. And, and, but it's, it's hard. And again, I grew, up with, I grew up pretty poor. I know it doesn't look like it now. I know. I, the people of Yankton know my story. So I, I was taught to care for poor people too. And so, but it, it, it's so hard trying to find a way to balance all this stuff. So I thank you. What concerns you the most about um, uh, serving the poor in Sioux Falls? Uh, is, it, is it something to eat, some place to live, getting care? It's a combination of many things yeah. because their, <clears throat> their needs aren't just one or the other. They're like us. They need food and shelter and care and opportunity. They do. Yeah, and, and as a society, we, we, try to, we try to do it uh, privately. We try to do it publicly. We have nonprofits that help. But reality is there's still a lot of people that are hurting out there and that need help. And uh, I do think, though, as a community in Sioux Falls, I think we try harder than many to, to help people. Uh, but there's still challenges out there. Uh, it is. Um, when uh, uh, we had that Van Epps Park discussion, what, two years ago? And we had those people that were, uh, uh, you know, drinking in our parks and creating all kind of havoc. And, and in some cases, they were drinking the, uh, the soap in the porta potties. Remember that? I mean, to, to get that high. Um, here's one of the things that I learned. Uh, and help me with your first name again. Was it Lois? No. Harriet. Harriet. One of the things that I learned then, we actually had people that were sleeping in bushes uh, across the street from Van Epps Park that I didn't know about. You know, I, I'm the mayor of Sioux Falls. I don't want anybody sleeping in some bush across from Van Epps Park. You know, I, I, so, you know, we're trying to find this balance. You know, how do, how do we care for all these people? And uh, I, we're, we're, we're not going to give up. Just like we're not going to give up on the crime deal, we're going to still keep caring for people in the city of Sioux Falls. But it's hard. Yeah, thank you. Good job. These are tough topics, but they're critical for our town. Uh, and we're getting ready with the, uh, with the budget discussions that are coming up. I'm going to give my budget presentation on Tuesday, and then it goes in the hands of the city council. You know, guess who also struggles with this? Your city councilors. Uh, these eight women, these eight men that you've elected, they have to find a way to struggle through this thing too and find a way to, to balance these budgets and and, and, uh, and do some good things, so good job. Yes, thank you. I'm wondering about the homeless. How, how bad is that here? Well, I, I think that there's, there's always the, those folks that are homeless too, and the definition of homeless can be quite broad. Um, those that I think that we all think about are those people that are just, that are just uh, uh, sleeping uh, under some tree or, or, or in their car. Or th but homeless is actually even greater than that. It's, it's folks that are families that are living uh, temporarily with some other family, uh, even though they, they may have a roof over their heads or uh, food uh, that they can. They're still, they're still homeless. They don't have their own home or their own shelter. Um, uh, it, it is, it's, again, it, 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 it's a challenge. Uh, we try to monitor it with the help of people like Stacy Teason and, and others. Uh, Bishop Dudley. Uh, St. Francis, Good Shepherd, The Banquet, we're trying to track that there too. Uh, but, but homelessness is another one of those things. It's not going away. I mean, folks, uh, you've got some people who choose to be homeless. They do. Uh, they're, they're they've got some challenge. They'd prefer to be outside than they, than they want to be inside. Um, and some of them are veterans too, folks. They're veterans. People that have served our country, women and men that are, that are homeless. So, um, yes, thank you. Yes. But that's part of the mental health uh, problem. Yes. It is. It is. And, 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 you know, we could talk about mental health for the next hour, too, and we're not going to do that. But, folks, I, uh, 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 you have been unbelievably open, uh, unbelievably 
uh, uh, very constructive, good comments. I love it. Uh, but I think it's time to, to grab a cookie, grab some coffee. Uh, and, and, I, and can I just add, can you invite me back to Dal Romo again? Uh, let's do it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.